All right, let's do this. You all hear me? Good. All right. So my name's Tony. Been doing Rails for about eight years now. That's where you can find me online. Today we're going to talk about a journey building a gym from start to finish and going through a couple issues along the way. So a couple notes. Uh, got a lot of code uh, in this presentation. If you want to see the code, you better move up, else you can uh, just look up the slides later. I'll post well where I uh, stash these. Um, keep in mind, unless there's a dollar sign in front of anything, uh, that's Ruby code. If it's a dollar sign, that means you're doing it in your terminal. And uh, fair warning, uh, there's a, quite a few memes in this presentation, so sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's start at the beginning. We want to build a gym. Specifically, this gym is going to do one very basic thing. When you run an active record query, instead of getting an array of active record objects back, you just get a simple array of hashes with just the raw data in them. Pretty simple stuff. We're going to shove all the code on GitHub. We're going to use Travis CI for running our tests. Against your better judgment, you go with RSpec. Uh, we have Postgres installed locally on our machine, so we might as well use that to as a test database. We want to support all currently active versions of active uh, record, so that's 4.2 and later. And we want to support pretty much all the databases that Rails support, so MySQL, uh, uh, SQLite, Postgres, all that good stuff. So let's start. First thing we do, pop in our terminal. We have bundle pre install. Bundle gem, name the gem. This is the standard way to build a gem from scratch, because it'll build a nice scaffold that'll have everything you need to, build, to pretty much build whatever you want. So we run this in our terminal. A bunch of files are made. We're done. We have our gem. Great. Step one, we want to go into our gem spec. This is the overall structure and description of our gym and what it what, what it basically can do. We have descriptions, we have author information, we have home page information. We don't care much about that. What we really care about is throwing in dependencies. In gyms there are two types of dependencies. Regular dependencies, which are required when you when an end user actually installs your gym, and development dependencies for when you're just debugging it locally. So in this case, we want to say that we have to have a hard dependency of at least active record 4.2 and later. And if you're working on this gym at home for whatever reason, uh, we want to have Postgres, the Postgres gym installed as well, because that's how your tests run. And then you run bundle locally, and it'll make sure you have all dependencies, both regular and de uh, development dependencies, installed for you. Then we build the actual gym. This is literally the entire gym. We require active record, we build a simple module. That module will have one method in it, which basically takes the active record log connection, executes the query chain as a SQL statement, and calls 2A on it. And then at the very end, we take a module and we pass it into active record base. We're going to use extend. This will make it a class method instead of an instance method. And it will trickle down, thanks to Rails magic, to active relations. So for building a chain of queries, we will have this method there as well. Then we get to write tests. Oh boy, do I love our spec. <laughs> so the way I'm building this is we have our spec helper, which is like a test helper if you use mini test. We're going to manually require our gem at the top. We're going to manually invoke a connection to active record. Uh, we're going to have a database pre-built in uh, Postgres land, uh, raw to a test. Uh, and then we're just going to shoehorn in a active record migration in line, which is the active record schema define. We want to build a user's table, just like a regular Rails migration. We want to build a simple user model. We want to shove 10 random records of users in there. And then at the end, we have various RSpec configuration flags that I don't really touch. So that's the basis of the tests. Here are the actual tests. With our spec, they have a nice thing called shared examples, where you can build a series of related tests, shove in a, uh, uh, an object into it, and run tests on that object. So in this case, I'm building a shared example that takes, we'll call this a query object, uh, the actual test subject, which, on the, which is on the next line, is the result of calling our new method against this object. 
Um, and then we essentially run tests against that. We want to make sure that the thing we get back is an array, the array contains only hashes, the number of elements in the array matches the number of rows we would get back if this was an array of active record objects. We make sure that each key is the same number of, uh, is the same columns we would get back for active record attributes, et cetera, et cetera. And then we actually run our tests by shoving in our user class uh, user with a where tacked on, user selecting only one column from the table, and user with a limit. And basically it's common permutations of what you would normally do with active record shoved into the shared examples. We call raw to a on it, and we make sure that what we get back from that is actually what we expect. So those are our tests. And of course, they all pass. Yay, green. And since we're using Travis, we want our tests to run automatically every time we push. So this is the simple Travis configuration file. No sudo, we're using Ruby. We'll just use the latest Ruby 2.4.1. We'll make sure Bundler is installed, and we will have Travis create a test database for us on the server. And then Travis automatically knows to run rake spec and then report back if all the tests pass or not. So we do that, we push up, there's Travis, first, first commit passes, hooray. We're ready to actually make a gem now. So we have all the Ruby files, and when you build a gem through Bundler, it makes a very nice rake file that will have various extra tasks that you can do with, it, uh, do with your work in progress gem. One of them is rake release. It effectively, effectively makes a git, um, Git tag pushes it up to GitHub. It will, um, if you have already set up um, your workstation to use rubygems.org, it'll then connect to your account, wrap up the gem in an ice.gem file, and shove it up there for the world to see. That's effectively how you make a gem. The end. We have our gem up here. Great. Thanks for the free food. I'm out. <laughs> wait, wait. Three days later, <laughs> we get an issue in from this strapping young fellow. Um, apparently, Jim doesn't work with MySQL. Uh, he's claiming that instead of an array of hashes, we just get an array of arrays back. What? <laughs> but 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 the test passed. Well, what what the heck happened? I mean, my my plans have failed. I have to actually do work now to try to fix this. Well, we have a bug. Step one to fix a bug is you have to reproduce said bug. He said he was on MySQL, so we get to install MySQL. Um, you're on your own for this step. Depends on your OS stuff or whatever. But effectively, similar to setting up Postgres locally, you create your MySQL instance, boot up the server, create a test database, pretty much similar to Postgres. But Active Record needs a different gym if we want to talk to MySQL, so we're just going to shove in, for now, an extra development dependency of MySQL 2, which is the gym you use to connect to MySQL. And then we want to bundle to install the MySQL 2 gym locally. And then in our spec helper, well, we need to tell Active Record we need to use MySQL instead of Postgres, so we'll just quickly change the adapter from Postgres to MySQL 2. And then we run the test. Surely this will work. It's active record, right? It works with every database. That's a lot of red. There, there, is, there is no green in that terminal output. And uh, if you look closely, um, failure number one expected each row to be a hash. Well, that looks like an array to me, which is exactly what the bug report said it was. So to spare everyone the trouble, um, this is the fix. Um, you use execute query and then call 2A on that if you dug into the uh, Active Record API. And uh, that's actually how Active Record gets some of its uh, raw data back anyway. You don't just use execute, you have to use this method instead. And great, it's all green again. Suddenly, everything passes just with that one line change. And to save everyone time, Switching the adapter back to Postgres with the same code change, you get green back again. Great, so we fixed the bug, right? Nothing can ever go wrong again. Well, we're not quite done yet because we don't want to tell contributors to our gym, or we don't want to anyway, mainly change the code back and forth every time you need to test different databases. It gets tedious, you can easily commit something you don't mean to commit. Uh, now we have both Postgres and MySQL gems as dev dependencies. 
which some people may not care about, especially if they just want to use their gym and their app and they don't have to install another database system just to contribute to the, contribute to the gym themselves. Um, also, what about different versions of Active Record? We uh, so far are fine with whatever version I'm running, whatever version the guy was running that submitted the bug, um, but Active Record can change with every version. So uh, what we really need is a way to tell the tests to use different databases and different versions of Active Record on the fly. So how do we swap all that out? Because effectively, it's a matter of what gyms are loaded. We have the MySQL gym loaded, Active Record can use MySQL. Load Postgres, we can use Postgres. The short answer is we want to basically slipstream in what gyms we actually want to use on boot up for our tests. On, uh, which, that, which means on the, spec, on the uh, spec helper level. How do we adjust what gyms are running? Well, one nice thing about uh, bundle exec, who doesn't, by the way, who doesn't run all the Ruby stuff using bundle exec? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> what bundle exec essentially does, it will look in its, the current directory before it actually runs the Ruby binary for a gym file. Well, then scan the gem file very quickly and make available to the process specifically what is in that gem file. Um, effectively, it doesn't lock out every gem available on your system, but it helps direct the Ruby process when you want to require all the gems which ones to actually use. So it uses a gem file. Well, we haven't actually looked at a gem file, but when we made our gem, we actually got a gem file that we never really touched. What's in it? Well, this is all that's in a gem file for a uh, Ruby gem, really. Um, source rubygems.org, like any other gem file. But instead of the list of gems, we have this gem spec uh, method. And what that effectively does is tell Bundler, when you use bundle install, hey, jump to the gem spec instead and grab all the dependencies as, as if they were listed in the gem file. It's effectively how it works. So what if we just had Bundler forcibly use and select the gems that we want. What if we just shove Ruby code in our gem file? Can we do that? Yes, we can. A gem file, uh, what Bundler really does with a gem file is file read and basically instance evaluate within the context of Bundler's uh, uh, methods. Gem spec is a method inside a Bundler somewhere. Gym is a, is a method inside a bundler somewhere. All it does is process Ruby code. If you've ever seen a configuration file for like Puma or Unicorn, um, that's effectively what it does as well. It effectively evaluates that file as Ruby. That's why you can put in all the hooks, all the configuration stuff, and your own whatever, really. And so when you boot up your app, it reads the entire configuration file. So. We can shove a uh, plain old Ruby in, gym, in a gem file. Let's make it smarter. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, kill the uh, MySQL and Postgres dev dependencies from a gem file, because we don't always want that. If it's in the gem file, it'll always be required, or the gem spec. Instead, in the gem file, we're going to throw in a case statement. And one thing we can do every time we execute a Ruby process is set environment variables. Um, if you ever used uh, Rails in equals test, or uh, specifying a specific, specific version when you run break db migrate down. Those are environment variables to the OS that is only available for that one, uh, one uh, command that you run. So what if we look for a couple of environment variables with some in, you know, standard defaults and uh, forcibly call the gem method with what version that we want. So in this case, we have an environment variable at the top of our gym file called AR, capital letters. If it's not present, we want to default it to a string for two. And whatever that value is, we're going to forcibly load an active record version in the 4.2 um, branch, the 5.1 branch, or the 5.0 branch, based on what we pass in. Similar to a DB environment variable, we can say we explicitly, explicitly want MySQL, or we can fall back to Postgres, the PG gem, if we actually don't specify anything. So down here, that is unfortunate. The laser doesn't, OK. So down there, you can see 
we run bundle update against the gem file with no, um, with no environment variable set, we're going to default to installing at the record 4.2 and using the PG gem. If we set db go to MySQL and run bundle update, we will still use Active Record 4.2, but instead we will make sure that we bundle the MySQL gem and make sure that's installed. Then you can obviously combine them together. I want Active Record uh, 5.0 installed with the MySQL gem. So we have a smarter gem file. Can we make our spec helper a little smarter? Well, reg spec is a, uh, basically what you use to invoke the Ruby process to run your tests. Let's throw in environment variables there because we need to tell Active Record which uh, database to actually connect to. So similar to the gem file, we have a DB environment variable. We're going to default to Postgres. And based on that variable, we're going to say Active Record established connection MySQL 2 or MySQL or Postgres. So we can effectively now choose what database driver to load and which uh, database to connect to before we actually run our tests. So bringing that all together, here are effectively the majority of the, or a list of various permutations we can use to invoke the actual tests. We want active record five, we say AR equals 5.0, bundle exec, break spec, it'll read the uh, gem file, they'll say, oh, we want to make sure we include active record five instead of whatever the highest level is installed on this R system. Then we go into our spec helper, oh, you want active record five, so we're going to make sure we only require that. The other example, MySQL, we load the MySQL 2 gem, we connect to the MySQL uh, database instead of Postgres, we run tests against that. One thing to note, though, is now that we are effectively changing the bundle in real time, our uh, rate commands have to be prepended with bundle exec. That makes sure that bundler uses whatever configuration we have set up if we are passing in environment vari variables. Otherwise, it will fall back to, I believe, like the gym lock file, which is not in version control, and use what effectively whatever the last thing that we bundled with with all of the defaults. So you could have, uh, you could specify Active Record 5, uh, got that running, but don't run bundle exec for another rate spec. Bundle will still try to request 5.0 because that was the last thing that you actually uh, uh, it effectively cached with the uh, lock file. And a minor annoyance is sometimes if you want to permutate through all the permutations, uh, you may have to run bundle update between each one just to make sure that the lock, the lock file is in fact in sync and you actually have all the gems as expected. So we do that, bundle exec, break spec, break spec with uh, AR50 loaded, it's all green. The other pane, we have AR50 with database MySQL, they all pass. Uh, I have a little extra testing or debug output here to show exactly what we're testing against using Postgres over here, using MySQL over here, and everything passes. We effectively can now, for every combination of active record and database that we want, we can test them on the fly locally. So if we get another bug for a specific version of active record, we can easily hop in and debug it. And if we need to uh, support more versions of active record and more databases, we can just tack on more to the switch statement and so we can basically control what we want to load. So we do that, um, but running tests locally is boring. We have, that's what CI is for. So let's append our Travis file. One, uh, one feature of Travis is you can set a, effectively a test matrix of environment variables. And what this will do is run rig spec one time for this, set of environment variables, then again for this set, then again for this set, then again for this set, then for this set, all in individual Travis runners. Each of them um, installing the only the gems that they actually care about. And just for sake of completion, completeness, let's throw in both uh, other versions of Ruby that are currently active supported. So now we have a combination of every version of Ruby for every version of supported active record, for every DB that active record supports, all, run, all running tests effectively at the same time with one push of Git. And how does that look? Well, it looks like a bunch of green. Um, poor Travis now has to run every individual permutation 
Um, they think it's free and they have money because that's a lot of the DM, DMs I kind of spin up at once. But they it, they pass quick. They take on average one minute, one yeah, one minute to a little over a minute. So that's not too bad. Um, but now we can easily see through this matrix what version of Ruby, what version of Active Record, what database is failing or passing based on any changes we make to the gym. So we do that, bump the version number, and maybe we want to write a change log. Eh. Uh, commit push up to GitHub, break release, close the issue, and have a beer. We're done. That's how you test everything. Uh, there is an alternative option to the environment variables, the, well, the two individual environment variables. You can, so by default, when you say bundle, it will always look for the gem file in the root of whatever directory you're currently working in. Uh, Bundler will also look for an environment variable called bundle gem file. And if you want to have a folder full of gem files of every permutation of active record and database combination you could ever want, you could manage, what would that be, six gem files that will continually grow over time. And instead of uh, setting two environment variables for your matri matrix, you can just set the same gem file over and over again, or a different gem file for every uh, run that you want. The only trade-off of that is it's not an easy way to ask, so what databases are available for active record to know which one to connect to? Um, this is commonly a better or easier practice to do when you don't have to worry about uh, different databases. Uh, you're confident with the fact that you want to test against different versions of just Rails itself. Um, and this is also natively supported by Travis. Um, there's a different entry you could put in the YAML file to say, here's a list of all the gem files that I want to run for each uh, worker. And you could do it that way. Um, but like I said, for this particular case, because I explicitly want to load different database drivers, I prefer this method because that gives me a bit more control. And I don't need to dynamically ask what gems are loaded to know which database to actually connect to. So that's effectively it. Um, uh, threw a lot of code up really quickly. Um, I have a GitHub repo called Show and Tell where I put all of the uh, presentations I have. Uh, the gem is actually on rubygems.org now, as well as the uh, GitHub repo right here. Um, spoiler alert, it doesn't have the fake uh, uh, issue that I threw up there. In fact, it's, it's still version 0.1.0. I pretty much just fixed the bug before I even committed it to uh, rubygems. But you can see the final work there. I even threw in a bonus of default testing to MySQLite just so people don't actually have to have a full-fledged database installed locally if they don't want to, if they want to run tests locally. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, any questions? Any pizza left? Okay. That makes me sad. No questions? Thank you.